Welcome to another life-impacting message from City Light Church. You can find more great content like this online at citylight.church. Here we are. Hey, it is my really great pleasure to be able to bring the word to you today. And uh, it's one of those things like we, we really can trust in God's providence. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the kind of collective thing that we're all going through at the moment uh, might be causing some people to go, what the heck is going on? Like we talked about this last week in Romans 8. Where can we place our hope? What, what, what like foundation can we have to actually stand on, uh, build a life on, those kinds of things? And as we've th- seen through Romans 8, over and over and over again, as Paul is building his argument around the sovereignty of God, how in control he is, how loving he is, and how present he is by his Holy Spirit, uh, we can trust in him. We can trust him. And um, certainly true for now. So we're in Romans 8. We've not changed what we're talking about. We haven't skipped a week or, or, or done anything like that. We're in a part of Romans 8 right now where um, it really speaks to, I think, exactly the situation that we're going to at the moment. In God's sovereignty, we've landed here at Romans 8.28. In God's sovereignty, actually over the last couple of months, we've been collecting this kind of gear because we wanted to do this kind of thing anyway. And basically the last piece of equipment that we needed, we bought this week. So one more piece of equipment to, to make all of this happen uh, just came in this this week, and we've been preparing for this for a while. Uh, in his sovereignty as well, we've been planning our whole church structure around our discipleship groups, so that we don't build them around a personality, don't build it, haven't built it around me, uh, haven't built it around a platform, haven't built it around a Sunday event or worship experience, uh, but around Jesus' people in his community on his gospel mission. And so, again, in his sovereignty, um, <clears throat> this for us, I mean. It, it, it sucks because I love gathering together with you. I love getting together. Um, and in another sense, it is an amazing just sense of God's providence that he has prepared us for this very time. Uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm expectant that this is going to be a time of refining and uh, even great fruitfulness for the church, uh, in particular in the West. So this is one of those things that has really shaken us out of our comfort. Um, and again, like we'll see today, this is, this is an amazing passage to be in for today. Here's what I'm hoping that you'll do. <clears throat> if you are at home and you're not watching on your device, would you take a photo of where you're watching from? Um, if you are on Zoom with some others or with your discipleship group, can you take a screenshot of that, post it up on Slack? I'd love to get a collection of these just so we can get a bit more togetherness and, and understand the, the fact that we are still together, even though we're scattered we are the gathered scattered. Uh, we gather each week, normally at Byron Street, uh, for worship and word and communion uh, and to welcome others. <clears throat> but, and then we also scatter to go about the mission of God. Uh, it just happens to be that even in our scattering, we're still able to gather today, which is really awesome. All right. We had hoped to have baptisms today. Obviously, we're not having baptisms today, which is really unfortunate, but we'll work that out. If you are hoping to get baptized, we're still going to make that happen. We're just going to have to rely on technology more for um, togetherness. Um, but here we are. Romans 8. This is Romans 8, 28 to 30. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Let's pray together. We'll see what God would have for us today. <clears throat> Father God, I want to thank you that we can, even though we are, in a sense, locked away from each other, we have this social distancing, um, that you are still so imminent, so near. Thank you that we can still gather together in, in this way, uh, in this period of time. We're so thankful for this technology. I want to ask that you would help us by your Holy Spirit to understand the things that we're going to read today in your scripture, the things that we're going to learn today. Uh, help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to love more like Jesus. Help us to be more on your mission in the world and more confident in who you are, who we are in you and not in the things that are shaky in this world. And we're asking these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. So last week, you may remember, we finished off with this. This is the last part of the last part of um, Romans 8.27. It says, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit 
because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so we learned last week that according to the will of God, when we pray, the Holy Spirit actually comes alongside us and prays for us, actually intercedes for us, stands in a sense in between us and God, taking our prayers to God and actually converting them or translating them, making them into the prayers that we should have prayed. <clears throat> we don't have the words to pray. We don't know what to pray. When we, when we just, there's no, you know, there's no magic formula or magic words that we can say to pray. And so what we learned last week is that the Holy Spirit himself will pray on our behalf to the Father according to the will of God, the things that we would and should have prayed if we had the knowledge of God. And then the first thing we learned today is this. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. So we know, we have confidence. This is not a fleeting hope. This is not a vain wish like, oh man, I just, I wish that this would happen or I, I hope that somehow something would happen in this. No, no, we know. We have confidence in this. It's a, it's a knowledge. Actually, it's, it's a foundation of our belief that we build everything else upon. We know that all things, so not just some things, certainly not just the things that we can control, not the things that we see and we can think, okay, yes, I, I can imagine that this would work out or I can imagine that this is within God's capacity. We're talking about the God who breathes and everything must come into existence because of his will, because of his power, because of his ability to do whatever it is that he wants to do. So all things, God is sovereign over every single thing. So we know, that's our foundation, we know this. Everything, all things work together. So in his sovereignty, God is doing a work in your life. In his sovereignty, all the things that you wish had happened and all the things that you are working towards, all of the things that you're trying to avoid but happen anyway, and maybe we have a, a, like a collective kind of idea of what that looks like going on at the moment. What Paul is trying to say here in Romans 8 is that all of those things, God is actually weaving them all together. God is sovereign. He is at work. He is moving. This is a really amazing uh, anchor of hope that we have. That, that God is doing a work and he is able to do it and every single thing he's weaving together for the good is the next thing. So not only is he in control, not only is he weaving it all together, but he's doing it for a particular purpose according to his will and that is for our good. What does this mean? It means that, again, we have great confidence in God. We're not just relying, we're not relying on, again on a, on a vague understanding that God might like us if we do certain things for him or if we act a certain way, then God would love us or um, if, if anything, like if, you, you know, if dot, 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 uh, we don't have that kind of confidence in God. He's working out all things together for our good. It means we can trust him, especially in difficult times, especially when there's something that you wanted to do and now can't do. I know there's, there are people in our community who have lost their jobs recently. People in our community who have very significant medical conditions in their own right, let alone with the additional threat of coronavirus coming in. Many people who wish that something would happen in a particular way, and we can have confidence that God is working out all things for our good. And he goes in to explain a little bit about that in a minute. For the good of whom? Of those who love God. He's working, we know, all things work together for the good of those who love God. That means that this promise is specifically for those who belong to God, who love God, and that for all of those who love God, he's, he is working all things for their good. Again, it means that through the highs and the lows of regular life, and the highs and lows of being stuck in your house when you wish that you were gathering together with God's people, if you are a hugger, if you're an extrovert, uh, I bet you cannot wait until these restrictions are lifted, until coronavirus is gone, and you know you can embrace people again. I find it so awkward. Uh, I'm not much of an extrovert, but I find it awkward to not shake somebody's hand. When people come around in my house, not to offer them a greeting. Uh, I find that very, very difficult. Uh, what we know is that, I mean, everything that we go through, those small things to the very significant things, that God is for you. He has the means, the power, and the sovereign rule to make what he wants happen. So if you pray and the Holy Spirit is making your prayers into the thing that you should have prayed, 
And if God is all-powerful and sovereign and loves you and working together for your good, then we can have just such great confidence in our God that he is indeed working for our good, that you can work hard for things. It means we can strive for things. We can actually work hard not relying on that thing to try to make God love us, but he already loves us. Not, the, not, not desperate for that particular outcome, but knowing that no matter what the outcome is, or the thing that we're striving for or working hard for, that God is working and weaving together every element of our lives, those things we think we can control, those things we know we can't control, our external circumstances, he's working all of them for the good of those who love him. How do we tend to deal with disappointment? How do we tend to deal when things don't go our way or like we're in a situation like we are now? Uh, we wanted to travel. Um, Beck and I were hoping to go to the Philippines um, to visit uh, our sponsor child and a new sponsor child to see the, the work of compassion as well. Um, disappointing. Other people had uh, putting like wedding plans on hold. Uh, other people were looking at um, starting businesses and now just not or have businesses and have been, they're being threatened now uh, with not being able to actually continue. So what, what are some of these vices or ways that we normally deal with things abstract of the love of God? We, we want to know. We want to know. We might ask, why me? Or why this? Or why now? What's happening? Uh, th- there is a certain sense in which uh, we are desperate to know because if we feel like we have enough knowledge, then we feel like we can understand something, we might be able to actually control or contribute or do something. We're not resting and relying in the knowledge of God. Now, I'm not anti-knowledge. I love learning things. Uh, big, big fan of that. Uh, but one of the things that we tend to run to in crises is not to the love of God and the knowledge of God, but our own knowledge. And we want to know things. Man, knowledge is updating so fast, in particular in our current predicament with coronavirus, every single day. Men, sometimes hourly, new things are coming out. And for us, trying to communicate as a church, uh, both inside our community and externally to our community, sometimes we need like daily updates on things that are changing. This time last week, um, I was preaching and saying, we may not be able to meet next Sunday. And then by Tuesday, we're like, we can't meet this Sunday. And then by Thursday, we could barely even have this many people in this room. And so things update so quickly. Uh, I want to encourage you to not try to just rely on your own knowledge. That's one of the things we run to. What else do we run to? We run to control. We looked at this last week. When we feel like we can control something, we feel less anxious. Instead of resting in the knowledge that God is in control, we like to kind of try to wrench control from him and take that into ourselves. And then we have confidence. Then we don't fret. Then we don't have anxiety. Then we don't worry. Uh, this is how we tend to do things. We want to be the ones in control of our lives. <clears throat> Part of that is, thirdly, uh, we cling to what's normal. So instead of, instead of um, seeing maybe God is working all things together for our good because we want control, because we want knowledge, we want to cling to things that are normal. <clears throat> we actually uh, try to keep our life as regular as possible. And in, in some regards, there's a really good uh, case we've made that th- this is good. This is good for us to do this. But when God wants to move us somewhere and we want to stay here, the difference between where God wants to take us and where we are, we sometimes equate to or consider that to be suffering. We consider that to be hardship when, in actual fact, God is the one wanting to move us somewhere. When a virus comes out and upends everything and you can't even buy toilet paper, you can't meet with people who you want to meet. Like our discipleship group this week met over Zoom. Uh, And we will for the foreseeable future because we can't be in the same room. There's too many people to meet in the same room together. It's too dangerous given our current climate uh, and the the virus going around at the moment. And so what we want to do is to try to cling to what is normal and go, well, stuff that, we'll still meet together anyway. Or we'll try to do whatever we want to do anyway. But we need to consider maybe God is at work in all of this. Maybe he's doing a work in you actually at the moment. If God is working all things together for your good, and this is a thing, which it is, what makes us immediately think difficult circumstances are not being used by God for our good. We, have, we actually singularly have this hope in difficult circumstances that God is using this for our good. Not our normalcy, not our comfort, not our control, not even our knowledge sometimes, but for our good. If it challenges you, if it changes you, if it's not comfortable, if it redirects your plan for your life into something else. What about my great plans for my life, God? Even the great things I wanted to do for you. Uh, no, no. God, God is at work in you, 
even your best plans, even the ones you thought would be great for God's glory, He is the one who's doing this work in you. And lastly, we want to treat into comfort, what we know, what we can control, what feels normal, what we like. All of these things, all of these things are comfort. All these things lead us to go, ah, I can rest and relax because I know I have control. Things are normal. I don't have to trust God right now. What's the antidote to this kind of thinking? It's to know and acknowledge God already knows everything this passage tells us. He knows everything. That God is in control of everything. You don't have to know everything. God knows everything. And he's for you. You don't have to be in control. God is in control. And he loves you. You don't have to cling to normal. He is working all things together for your good. And you don't have to find comfort in temporal things that can be like whisked away from you in an instant by being under lockdown or by your health being taken away or by your job being taken away, but we go to the comforter. We go to God himself. He is your comfort. He is your strength. What can we possibly worry about if he's in control, if he knows everything, uh, if, if he is working things out for our good and if we can trust in him for our comfort? All right, that's just the first line. That's just the first bit. So let's, we need to like really work through this next part. Here's the rest. All things for their good of those who love God who are called according to his purpose. So there's a calling and a calling according to his purpose. God does the calling. God is the one who's, who is initiating. He's the one who's at work. Again, he is the one who's in control. We don't have to worry about these things. According to his purpose, according to his will, and according to his reasons. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Man, this is a really, um, I think, uh, sometimes misunderstood, sometimes misunderstood, sometimes controversial, but for me, a really amazing, like awesome verse. This is one of those things that helps me understand God truly is in control. Those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So what's the purpose? Purpose, the purpose is for your Christ likeness. What is all this happening for? What is God doing right now? He is working together for your good so you would become more like Jesus. This is his goal for you. This is his goal for your life. This is why it's not your comfort or your control or your knowledge or even the thing, your plans and the things that you want to do. It is God working in your life to make you more like Jesus. You're conformed to his image. That's why it's so much more important to God. This is much more important to God than your temporal happiness or comfort. And, and the quicker we realize this and let go of our clinging to normalcy or our own uh, control of trying to maintain our comfort and normalcy, um, the, the quicker we will embrace the things of God. This is what the Spirit prays when He's interceding on your behalf, when He's translating your prayers your feeble and my feeble prayers. When, when we don't know what we should pray, we don't know the things we should pray for, what is He praying for? That will be made more into the likeness of Jesus. This is his goal for us. This is what it means to, to be according to his will. And Paul, he tells us, those he foreknew, he predestined. So God not only knows everything that's going to happen, he not only knows everything that is happening right now, he, not, he also knows everything that will happen. And not only does he know it as if, as if he is abstract from, uh, from like making it happen or being in control, it says he, he foreknew and he also predestined. So he knows, doesn't just know what is and what will be, um, he, he has some causative effect in there as well. In fact, we know that everything is either caused or allowed by God because he is sovereign. If he wasn't sovereign, if he, didn't, if he didn't cause or allow everything, he would not be God. And so what we take from this passage here is he has predestined some to be conformed to the image of his son. Pre as in before, destined as in destiny. So before... Um, you were born, God had already mapped out your destiny. He wanted you to become like his son, Jesus. And what he has been doing your entire life, even in your parents' life, in your grandparents' life, in your great-grandparents' life, all the way back, he has been weaving and working all things together for the good of those who love him and for you now, so that you would be conformed to the likeness of Jesus. This is, none of this is beyond God. If we have difficulty understanding this, it's because we do not have the capacity of, of understanding that God has. 
Again, he speaks, he breathes, he whispers, and galaxies come into existence because they have no choice but to obey his command. This is a difficult thing for some people to accept. The sovereignty of God. That he chooses some, that he calls some and not others. It's a difficult thing to accept. In the sovereignty of God, we know he is, he is good. We don't just hold up his sovereignty. We also see here that he is good. He is a good God. He loves his people. And so we can trust in him. Uh, if God is sovereign, how could he not predestine? I've heard people, some people say things like, well, <clears throat> he just knows. He just, he just knows, but he doesn't cause. And I'll say, well, if he knows but doesn't cause and also allows, then he is allowing people still to be born, to be created, to have souls, and yet not call them or with the knowledge that they would not receive him. So you actually can't get around it. Either way, we know he is predestining some. Why is he doing this? The passage tells us. He's doing this to make more people like Jesus. He finishes it way. He goes on to say, so that he, Jesus, would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. This is again a wonderful promise. God is making for himself a family. That you are the little sister or the little brother of Jesus himself. We've seen already in Romans 8, you are his co-heirs. That he will share everything with you, even, even glory that is due to him. This is what God is doing in you, even right now. Even as you wonder if you're going to have a job next month. Even if you wonder what life is going to be like in the future. How long will this thing last? Will it last a month? Will it last six months? And even if it lasts only a month, will, will life take a year or two years to get back to, to what we would class as normal? But don't have to worry about these things. Even as you join in with the church in singing, like today, join in from your homes, from your car, whatever it is that you are now, join in the singing, join in the scripture reading, join in the sitting under God's word, serving as you go to your neighbors and being a witness of God's goodness in your life. He is working all things together for your good so that you would become more like Jesus. So that he would call and make for himself a family of people just like Jesus. And he finishes here, and those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. And so if he predestined, he also called. And if he called, he also justified. If he justified, he also glorified. And so we see this, this causative, logical progression here, meaning that if he predestined, the end result is always glory. Because if he, if he predestined and he did, then he also called. And those he called and he did call, and he, I believe he called you, he also justified, meaning that he, he has finished the work in Jesus, on the cross, in his perfect life, in his sacrificial death. There's nothing more that can separate you from the love of God. We'll see this in a couple of weeks. Nothing more that can, you can add to your salvation. Nothing more that needs to be done in order to get God to love you or, or somehow find his favor, but he has gifted you his favor. He's gifted you his love. It's a wonderful, wonderful promise. And those he justified, he also glorified. We, we have part of that glory now in that we get to know him, in that we get to live for his glory, in that we live in this great hope of the future inheritance and that that glory will one day be really consummated uh, in the new creation, the new earth. And we get our resurrected bodies. Again, we looked at this a couple weeks ago. We get our resurrected bodies. We share in inheritance and in the glory of Jesus. Uh, all those sons and daughters he is called will share in the glory of our great King. What a beautiful promise. What a wonderful God we have. He is, even in the midst of your small trials or maybe your large trials. And man, maybe what we're experiencing now is only mild compared to what's to come. But we know that in every single thing, God is working all things together for our good. Let's pray together. Father God, we want to thank you and praise you, actually, that you are the sovereign God, that you love us, that you have called us, that you have justified us, and that we will share in the glory of your own Son. Father, you are so very good to us. How? How? I mean, we can't. We know we cannot ever possibly slightly repay you. 
and, and because of your mercy, because of your grace, we don't have to. And so what, we, what we're asking is that we would live in the confidence of the knowledge of your love. The confidence in the knowledge of your sovereignty. The comfort in the presence of your Holy Spirit. So that not only would we walk in confidence, but we could be a confident, calming, comforting presence to a world that is freaking out to our neighbors, to our friends, to our family. Help us to carry within us this great hope that we have that manifests itself in us in calm, in confidence, in love for, our, for you and for our neighbor. Lord, help us as we um, like continue to worship now, continue to sing now. Help us um, join with your Holy Spirit in singing things that we are as we are in the holy and beautiful name of your son Jesus we ask amen thank you for listening to audio from City Light Church we hope you found it helpful and we'd love for you to share this message with others for more great content more information about City Light Church or to donate to the work of City Light Church visit us online at www.citylight.church